and welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on over there for some Gruel Adventures. Sorry, we got something a little new here, a little different. Uh, we're going to be going with 5.0 Friday. And if you're watching on YouTube, let me know what you think of this idea for 5.0 Friday. This is where I'm going to be taking deck lists from the um, Magic Online 5.0 results that they post every couple of days and trying them out over in ranked. You know, taking some of the more interesting ones. We just played Jeskai Fires. Didn't go so well for us. But we got Gruel Adventures and then Mono Blue Tempo later on. For those of y'all that really liked uh, Mono Blue last format, trying to bring it back. Um... And then I got a donation deck that we're going to be playing here in the middle also. But so this this was a this was again this was a 5-0 list. This was not a you know so these three decks I mean the donation deck too. So none of these were decks that I put together myself. But this one looked pretty interesting. You know, like we were just playing a, a gruel aggro deck, but we get the card advantage of Edgewall Innkeeper, you know, the one mana Risen Reef that we get to have. You know, of course, Bone Crusher Giant and Love Struck Beast are two very good adventure cards. And you know, Rimrock Knight is acceptable and so it's in here also to, to help us get some some card advantage with those but then we have you know like our our big mythic uh damage producing threats with the haste of questing beast and scargan hellkites and then the double strike trample of ember cleave so that's our our top end there so this one looked pretty interesting and our sideboard has our removal like our domri's ambushes over here, we got some Great Henge if we want to go long against Mono Red. We got the Red Cap Melees for that matchup. And then, um, you know, Colossus also helps finish this stuff off. If we get Colossus plus Ember Cleave, like those two, like that's just incredible, by the way. Giving a creature plus five, uh, pow like adding five power double strike trample. It's pretty ridiculous. But Okay, so let's, let's uh, give this a try. Gruel Adventures. So we're going to play it over in Ranked. Have you tried the Mono Blue Dredge deck? Oh. <laughs> uh, oh, have I tried Mono Blue Dredge? Yes. Um, yeah, like I... I mean, I've, I've been playing Dredge for months and months now. And yeah, I, I played it. I, I don't like Mono Blue, though. I, I you know, I played a Grixis. Um, but I think you certainly need Red. I think you have to be able to cast... Arc Light Phoenix in the deck because I think casting Arc Light Phoenix and um, like to be able to attack either an Ashiok or a Narset, I think that's pretty vital to the deck. And yeah, I have played it with with Secret Keeper. Yeah, Secret Keeper was a really nice addition to the to the deck for sure. Yeah, to find a li the list of of five O decks, uh, I I use MTG Goldfish. Like the Wizards website's pretty pretty difficult, but MTG Goldfish lists them. Um, let's just kind of make some more one ones, I guess. Realm Cloak Giant. I don't like seeing that. I guess maybe I was supposed to play the Innkeeper. Last turn instead of this other Pell Collector. I wanted to get the card that dealt more damage, but definitely see that being <coughs> incorrect. I'm probably not playing another creature next turn. Like this is this is ten damage here that we could be attacking for, and then you like if we draw a red source, we just get double Bone Crusher Giant to kill them. So I guess that's like that's like the reason to play. Wow, that was the reason to play the Pelt Collector.
Sweet. All right, so it worked out. Turn four kill in standard. When your opponent doesn't do anything. Is this even a matchup that we sideboard? I'm kind of feeling like it's not. Unless I'm supposed to play like the Great Henges to try to give us a better game against Sweepers. I think that's like the only... I don't think we play any of these other things. I mean, you know, I guess Domri is kind of the same thing. I could definitely see playing a Domri on the draw, how Domri can get like, you know, give give these creatures haste also and be card advantage. Let's play a Domri on the draw. We're gonna take out one of these Rim Rocket Knights. Let's do that. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't have unsummon in my deck, and I think that was a mistake. I think unsummon is really nice in the Phoenix deck. Gruel Adventures is more your style than Golgari List. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Give it a try. Yeah. Well. And of course, we'll see how it goes. Overall, you know, like one game in, can't complain at all. But you know, we'll see how it plays. You know, throughout some more matches here. Okay, so if we lead with Pelt Collector, do I need to take a fourth land? <laughs> this is tough. Is there all like, it's basically, I think Fourth Land or, or Lovestruck Beast are like the two cards I'm kind of looking at. We should probably take Fourth Land. It's the safest thing because, you know, like we're going to need five for Hellkite. Aggressive with haste, haste creatures. It's the way to go. So we get just sky fires. Is it up? Not quite. So this looks like my opponent's playing a a Fires of Invention list. Kind of looks like it, at least. But maybe not. I guess Fires of Invention with Once Upon a Time is not amazing. You know, making you like have like that other spell. You don't want to play. You know, you want to play just two powerful spells. Sorry, I had to sneeze there. Are they going counter magic? What are, what are they doing shocking in here? Plaza only taps for red white, so they could be shocking in for growth spiral. I guess growth spiral would make sense. All right, let's shuffle this up. You know, we put those three powerful cards down to the bottom. It'd be good to have any of those back.
we're getting close to killing our opponent. You know, if they have a sweeper, you know, like we'll have the Hellkite to put them down to one. We'll have the Bone Crusher in hand as well. So yeah, last time we killed on, you know, we had lethal on turn four this time. Close to lethal. That's lethal. No, not lethal anymore. It was close. So yes, I could have played Hellkite, but then, and you know, if we would have played Hellkite, the Grazer, Grazer blocks Hellkite. And then, uh, they still go to four, but then if, if I would have played Hellkite and then they played Sweeper, that would have been tough. So going this way means that if they go Sweeper, we still have the Hellkite to follow up. You know, like I, I want the, the Hellkite after a Sweeper kind of thing. GG. Alright, I already like this deck more <laughs> than just guy. Getting those wins back. <laughs> Thanks, Baloney Pony. GG's. I don't think we. I don't think we mulligan this, but this is not great. Hey, Hitchens, GG. Celesnia Guildgate. Yeah, we draw a red source and our hand is looking a whole lot better. For sure. So I'm just going to be casting the Lovestruck Beast. You know, like we, we won't get the extra 1-1. One, one. We're just going to be casting it next turn. Yeah, games are close. You know, like we lost to Golos Fires and Simic, Oko, and something else. Yeah, they were close games. The Cavaliers kind of underperformed a little bit. No, like I, yeah, like this is just this is just Golos. Again. <clears throat> All 
I guess I could have played this mountain. I don't feel like it's super likely they're just going to play a sweeper after playing Kenrith, but they could have time wipe. I sure hope not, obviously. But even if they do, you know, like we're refilling our hand, you know, like we're drawing three cards here. Like we're still going to have six cards in hand. Oh man, drawing another red source would be really nice, being able to have Ember Cleave and Colossus next turn. That would be really nice. Darn. All right, so they just did nothing. It doesn't really make sense to cast once upon a time. First. So it's only two mana to put counters on creatures. So they can do one, two, three, so they could turn Kenrith into an eight eight. Of course, it's three mana to gain five life, so they could just gain ten life here. Which is basically the damage I just dealt. Oh, there's just get fires. Okay. Alright, finishing the finishing getting the finishing touches for the upload for our previous deck. That is done now. Okay. So back to our match. Did they just gain five life and then do nothing else? Last turn? Oh, they probably drew a card. I'm sure they drew a card. So sure they did gain five life draw a card.
So Kenrith is the only creature that can actually block Questing Beast. Getting Kenrith off the battlefield would be really nice. If they do ha block um, Questing Beast with Kenrith, we can just pass priority because they're certainly going to activate Kenrith. You know, before the turn ends. Alright, so they're gonna go counters. Alright, so I could Bone Crusher Giant that thing. But then they just respond they just respond by adding another counter. I really shouldn't do that. They can gain 5 life still, so they can go to 17. Okay, so I think I do this to the questing beast to keep the questing beast alive. So it's either I have like 10 power double strike with trample, so that's like 20 trampling over. But, you know, like, they, they have enough to cover it with that in life gain. Or I do it on the Questing Beast here, where, where Trample with Death Touch, you only have to do one one damage here, and then the other um, seven Trample over. So, like, this is seven Trampling over for us with the Questing Beast. Like, they're going to survive the attack. But everything that they have is gone. All right. So again, I don't think we necessarily change anything for this matchup. I think, you know, last time I took out one Rimrock Knight for the Domri. That Rimrock Knight draw three was pretty cool, though. I think I'm going to just try doing that again. Gruel Smash. Yeah, it, it does feel weird playing Gruul without Spellbreaker, doesn't it? But it's working out. Spellbreaker isn't isn't the best in, in Oko meta. You know, like, there's just more 3-3s three running around. <laughs> Believe in the Embercleave. Yeah, that, that was my opponent's plan, was just to try to live. And they were hoping to draw a sweeper. So, like, they were thinking, like, the... The... Uh, the Ken Earth would be going away with the sweeper anyway. That's not the right card. It's... Rim Rock Knight. Yeah, you basically always cast Embercleave after they declare blockers. 
if if you have one and you know you, yeah he's basically always after blockers So dreary. Yes, I can cast Colossus now. I don't think that's a worthwhile Colossus, though. You know, we get two damage in, get Grazer out of here, but then I'm still just, you know, I'm left with the Pelt Collector. I don't think that's, I think we can do better. Which, wait, Frost Thief, which deck did you play against? Either guy's so good. The Folio of Law? Really? Okay. Do I just go Hellkite here? So that next turn I can have Questing Beast plus Colossus? I think so, and maybe this is wrong, but I kind of want this counter on this Hellkite. Maybe that's wrong. Because basically the reason why I wanted to counter on the Hellkite is because we have nothing after this questing beast. So it's like, what am I going to do with just all this mana over here? Well, either my opponent has another Golo, so they have a Sweeper. Looks like they have a Sweeper. That was the that was the bad case scenario of not hasting Hellkite as a sweeper. Good news is they don't have very much going on over there. They have a little bit, but not a ton. And I guess they have the castle Vantress, though. You should have the green giant in the sideboard for this matchup. Like what, Beanstalk Giant? I don't, I don't think we need Beanstalk Giant for this matchup. Like I guess, oh, because it does. I guess it doesn't die to the realm cloak giant. Nah, I mean we have the we have the red giant. This is gonna hurt.
Maybe we go Great Henge. Let's take out Puck Collector. We saw there, Puck Collector looked pretty bad. We'll take out two puck collectors for two gray henge. We'll try that. Um, you get any thoughts on the upcoming band restricted announcement? Uh, I've. I just wrote over on the Patreon page today. I just wrote about why, um, if y'all like to help support me over there on Patreon. <laughs> um, let's see. I guess we're taking this thing. I just wrote about why moving it up from last month to this month was a really bad idea, in my opinion. But I, th I mean, I think this. I think this weekend. What happens in the Mythic Championship this weekend is going to, you know, kind of make their determination of what they're going to do, I guess. But, um, yeah, I, I really don't like how they moved up the announcement there. With Raise Boar, Arc Bow, and Ramp. Okay. That's interesting there, Drez. Galter John, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub. Wow, it's a lot of Bone Crusher Giants. That's a lot of Bone Crusher Giants. I kind of need the mana, though. That's our that's our ninth sub of the day. I was behind one. Yeah, I agree. I think a lot of people will be upset if they don't ban Field of the Dead, but I think that, that they should have. I kind of feel like they should have waited till next month to, you know, let to see how, like, what happens with the metagame. Like, right now, everybody's playing the Mythic Championship decks, and that just makes sense. Like, that's just how, that's just what's going to happen whenever you have a tournament like this. So saying, oh man, our, our metagame looks really bad. Well, that's, that's true right now. But is that true in a couple of weeks? I don't know. It's true right now as everybody's playing the the same mythic championship decks that's just how like you know if you if you'd say that like the like any pro tour weekend from the past wow look at how messed up this metagame is everybody's playing the pro tour decks like, yeah that's just how it is Won't let them pick that back up in a time wipe or anything. And we get the Great Henge in play. <clears throat> so it's pretty important getting that thing in play. Yeah, Jeskai fires. I don't know, the, the Cavaliers just seem kind of over. The Cavaliers seem overmatched. Yeah, can we get this one extra point of damage in? We know we just put like three. We put three Bone Crusher Giants down at the bottom. I, I wouldn't mind drawing like a fetch land even. Um, 
But yeah, with the Great Henge, you know, yes, we drew three lands in a row, but we do have the Great Henge. Ugh, gross. Why do they have to have Sweeper Ether Gust? Kidding me? Yay! We drew our fourth <laughs> Bone Crusher Giant. Yay! We did it. <laughs> Never didn't have it. We definitely had that the whole time. Ugh, that was a good draw step. Ugh, for sure. All right, Gruel Adventure, keep it going. We've played two Field of the Dead, we're 2-0. Oh. I'm liking like I'm liking this girl deck because these innkeepers can give us a lot of card advantage, and I kinda like that. The goose. The goose. So I have three mana right now. The thing is I only have one green source right now. Kind of feel like I should take forest. Nope. Yeah, the, the beast is definitely greedy. That is true, but our, to be fair, our hand just wasn't good. You blocking with that goose? Wow, no respect paid here. Boo. That was very rude. It was very wicked. Our beast is just trying to find love with the help of an innkeeper. Can't get rid of the innkeeper. Innkeeper is trying to help the beast find love. So attacking doesn't make any sense because they can just they can you know make another food token, sack the other food token. <clears throat> and then their wicked wolf 
would eat the Love Struck Beast. Now, we can have the two beasts and attack and be able to have Ember Cleave available. I'm not sure if I was supposed to just play Pelt Collector and then Love Struck Beast and like just not even get the 1-1 one, one token. All right, have a good night, Ganaris. Good luck tomorrow. Hmm. Nah, this doesn't work. Cause now, yeah, I guess they have three food, so they can make theirs a six-six. That's not gonna work. Yeah, Esper deck from Last Standard, they lost uh, Teferi, Hero of Dominaria. Is the really big thing that they lost. You know, the, the card that just, you know, gained them an extra card every single turn. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised they didn't take up on a forest also to be able to activate Goose, but uh, maybe they're thinking <clears throat> they want... Yeah, like, like, cause if they, if they have the forest, they could like, you know, make another, they could have made another food here. No! Uh. All right, my opponent got me. Ah, uh, the opponent got me. I was really hoping they were gonna sack their other food. I was certainly hoping they were gonna sack their other food. I, I was being too, I went too, Cause like if, the, yeah, I went too greedy. Cause you know, like they sack their other food to kill my like this love struck beast. Then we can ember cleave the questing beast. Like if I just put the ember cleave on the questing beast right away, they get to turn their their wicked wolf into a five five, and um, and kill my questing beast because their their creature's indestructible. So like basically they would have been able to kill the questing beast still. So I was trying to make it so, like, I was hoping they were going to sacrifice. And then I could have saved my questing beast, and it would have been amazing. But it's tough. We have to make our decision first. Well, that should be lethal. That's lethal. Because, <clears throat> yeah, you know, like... 
even though we could make this like a five five double strike trample, but they just make their thing a five five and like the we would still trample over nine damage, but the questing beast would die. And I was hoping they're gonna be sacking the other one and then we could have saved questing beast kind of thing. I could have just put it on the love struck beast and we would have been able to definitely save the love struck like that but that love struck beast stayed alive anyway, but we would have dealt more damage, but Oh well. Wicked Wolves looked awesome there. So what do I... If I play these Zomri's Ambushes, what do we take out? Is it this Rimrock Knight? Yeah. Why you aren't allowed to act last? Because, yeah, it's your turn. So, like, like with you being the active, you know, you have to say who act first, who act second. When it's your turn, you're the active player. You act first, so the opponent acts second. They they don't want people to be able to, you know, you can you get to all right. Do you do I want to do anything? No, I don't want to do anything. You can have priority. And they're like, all right, I don't want to do anything either. Then it goes back. Well, now, do you want to do stuff now? And it's just like, where would you really ever end that cycle? It just makes sense to. Um, it just makes sense that you get, you know, you get your one priority. Like, I have my chance. I said, no, go ahead, opponent. Do you want to do anything? And they said, no, and then that's that's it. And so, yeah. So, yep, they would have been able to sacrifice the food after I Ember Cleaved. It's, it's the rough part about going first. <clears throat> so, I could collision... That goose right there killed the goose. You know, bolt the bird. I'm going to do that to get this goose out of here. So I'm going to try it. Do I want to draw a Colossus? Do I want to draw a Colossus they know about? is the big question. Yeah, glad you yeah, glad you glad you're loving the the Grixis Knights there. Do you think the mono blue dredge deck is is decent and standard, like top tier? No. No. It's fun to play and everything, but it's not. No, it's not top tier. I need to stop drawing lands. I, you know, I didn't keep the Colossus, wanting to draw other things. My deck's like, you want to draw other things? Well, here's a land, and another land, and another land. It's like, no, that's not what I meant, deck. I want spells. The things, not lands. Ugh.
When I can't even attack with a questing beast, they just eat it. Looks like my opponent probably has this. I mean, I guess I keep it on top. It's, you know, I don't want to draw a land. It's not, it's not even a good draw. Whoa, they just didn't activate the goose. What are they doing? They didn't. They don't want me to respond with them activating Goose with like a removal spell for the Wicked Wolf, I guess. Yeah, bad land pocket. These games did not go my way. That's for sure. These ether gusts have been pretty awesome. Uh, you, yeah, you just gotta understand, John, that losing streaks happen. I will invert the world and to watch kings grovel, and I think a little you know, like, is in order. Magic's a really difficult game. It's not not always gonna work out. Um, yeah, you, know, you just try to learn and and. Uh, do your best. That's all. You, that's all you can do. Is just do your best and try to learn from your experiences and try to get better. You can't really get too upset about losing a ton um, in a row, or you don't get too elated about winning a ton in, in a row. It's just <clears throat> it's got things even out. I can't even get through this Wicked Wolf. It's over. All right, two and one. Yeah, the Wicked Wolf was just too good against me, both of those games. So we got the Once Upon a Time that should be able to get us another land drop. Legion's End would be pretty rough. Innkeeper aggro. Would holding the beast back there have been better? Yeah, they. I mean, they also have the mana to, yeah, Blood Wolf. They also have the mana there to sacrifice food. So it's it's not like if I don't block with the beast, that I would have had lethal. So they had a bunch of food and they had the mana to sack one though. So it wouldn't have been lethal still. So I want to Bone Crusher Giant kill their innkeeper, but I also want to hit land drops. I think I'm going to draw two and try to hit a land drop because we need to be able to spend mana. Well, this ain't, this is not good. <clears throat> we had like nine lands last game. Where, where are all those lands at? 
the bottom of our library, we know that there's one land and three spells because of our Once Upon a Time. So if you count those four, you know, 44, we've seen three lands. So the next 44 cards have another 21 lands. Yeah, we could we could have killed one planeswalker. Like it doesn't kill both planeswalkers. Like it's it's just not enough damage to kill both planeswalkers. Like both planes like you know, they had a planeswalker on you know, like uh 5 and 7, I think. But then I mean my questing beast would be dead and we we would still be dead. No, I did not win the previous game. Nope. So we got to hit our land drop that turn, which is good. <clears throat> got their innkeeper out of here. So now casting giant or beast, love struck that is, either one next turn draws us two cards, grows this pelt collector. I'm, I'm likely not going to be using the one mana on this love struck beast. Likely. If we draw a fourth land here, then then I guess I probably do. Then I just do the, the love struck beast beast but I like so like just in case we don't I like getting the Pell collector in play nature will take back what rightfully belongs to it <laughs> stomping time that card's so good I guess I could go Bone Crusher Giant. Next turn, Paradise Druid. It could be a 6 5, though. Hey, Blue Gen. If we would have drawn a land, I think I'd just play Questing Beast and attack them with the Questing Beast and have all three other creatures attack Vivian, where either they let Vivian die, you know, like they could block like one innkeeper and let Vivian, Vivian die, or they trade Questing Beast for Paradise Druid and Vivian would have gone down to one loyalty. And that's what I would have preferred to do if, if we would have drawn the land, but obviously we didn't. We're fit enough to survive.
This is really bad. I don't really like any of the lines that we could come up with. Works out. Anger only gets me so far. If they don't block, then I finish off the. I don't play Ember Cleave. I finish off the Vivian with Bone Crusher Giant, um, and then you know re then cast Bone Crusher Giant. If they would have blocked with Paradise Druid, that would have been the worst. You know, I guess I just have to Ember Cleave again. But then they they have they have like the Questing Beast. Like I would not. I would have been really sad if they would have just blocked with Paradise Druid. I think Vivian, yeah, Vivian fits pretty well in the deck as long as we get to cast it. Like, if we want to play Vivian in this deck, I mean, I, I really like Vivian. I think Vivian's very strong. All right, so they're, they're definitely going to be killing the Lovestruck Beast. Certainly. I'm gonna draw more cards. I wanna, you know, try to keep hitting land drops. It's not really hitting land drops. Like they're gonna murderous rider kill the love struck beast for to start with. I just like having you know we're at eight here, and we have a lot better late game with these innkeepers and everything. I think it's it's better to play a little defense here. I know we're a gruel deck and that feels weird, but that's what we should be doing. Wow, there's only one land out of those. All right, so we know our bottom eight cards have one land among them. I kind of forgot their deck has... kind of forgot their deck has finality, to be honest. I guess if I would have attacked with the Paradise Tr or with the um, with this Pelt Collector, we could have killed them there. But I do have, you know, I have the ability to Hellkite with haste plus deal two with Bone Crusher. <clears throat> Obviously, the Colossus. Yeah, no, I'm not going to try the Eldraine card only event. Um, I don't like those events that have such a poor, has a very bad. Bolos, um, I will survive you. Uh, has a very bad EV. Like, it's just... It has very bad prices, like, for the event. And I'm not going to really play it. But you're at one damage, opponent. Why would why would you want to lose two life? 
Why, why would you kill yourself? You don't have two damage, two life to give. I never wanna heal. Right, I'm gonna take out Collision Colossus. Gonna bring in some Veil of Summers. Take out this other Rim Rock Knight for another Veil of Summer. Um. Wanna play a couple Great Henge? I don't think they play Spawn of Mayhem. They have Rankle. They have, I should have Rankle for Collision Colossus. I mean, it's, yeah, so like I, I could play all these Domri's Ambushes. For more removal. I don't know. We'll we'll see how we do without it. Yeah, it's an event this weekend here. It's on on arena. It's it it doesn't. It's just like a really small event with poor payout. I wouldn't really recommend playing it. But yeah, you you make basically you make a standard deck with only cards from Eldraine. Um, I was looking for Edgewall Innkeeper, of course. The Hellkite's, like, I like Hellkite more than Lovestruck Beast, but we're just forever away from actually casting Hellkite. But I have, you know, like, turn two, turn three, turn four already, if we want to go that route. Yeah, I'll, I'll just take this. If I take the Lovestruck Beast, though, I get to make the 1-1 one, one right now. Yeah, go ahead, FLN. Yeah, go ahead. You know, put put like a link to the deck. Don't. Okay, yeah, there you go. Good. I was gonna say don't don't just like copy paste the list into the chat. Too much. Text there. Okay, you added another temple. I kind of want to take out a temple. From the smallest ant to the largest hydra, nature is beautiful. Ah, Chomp. I've endured worse. And you're going questing beast and crisis. Makes sense. Like those, I mean, those cards are awesome. I don't hate it. Um, I wanted a deck that that was really good against, and you know, I see you have Nessa in there. I wanted a deck that was really good against all the sweepers that all these Golos decks are playing. Like that's what I wanted to go with, and so I didn't want to go with with playing creatures. I wanted, you know, besides obviously the the one mana mana creatures, I wanted to to dodge sweepers. Protect the virtue of this world. Behold, nature's true power. Let's 
So the beast just trades I'd with the forest. The if I were you. And then I'm gonna. Okay, I assume they block. I've seen too many species die already. Like, obviously, Bone Crusher Giant's better than Rimrock Knight. Yeah, I guess we'll just play it. But I was gonna say against against the Nissa land, a Rimrock Knight just trades with you know trades with it as well. We'll just go with the giant. No, that's I'm not. Liliana. Require servants. Your corpse will volunteer. This looks like a fun new toy. Why do these things have seven loyalty? Why can't they have six loyalty? If I attack with Bone Crusher Giant, it just lets them draw a card, but I guess. I guess it's worth it to get the 2 2 off the battlefield, I guess. I don't, I don't love it. They were a lousy servant. Back off! So I, you know, went with the Questing Beast there to get damage in while we could with it before they have, like, three threes to be able to block the Questing Beast. <laughs> Good we still have the Hellkite in the air. In war. My opponent knows, has all the information. You know, they know about this Hellkite that we took a long time ago, and they obviously know about all these. So they have, they have all the information. Oh yeah, I absolutely love Spark Double in the Teamer Walker deck. I'm just so happy with that card. Maybe they don't have removal for Hellkite? No removal? No removal. No life gain, no removal. Rise and shine. Uh, you just really want to play Once Upon a Time? Hmm. It is a very good card. There's no, there's no denying that. It's very good. It's a weird spot. I want to block the forest to get it out of here before it's indestructible with Nyssa. But then also I don't want them to, to draw a card. It's a weird spot there.
When the land speaks, I shall listen. I protect that which cannot protect itself. Be wary of the ground you walk on. Really, Veil of Summer? Now you show up? Could have had you earlier. <clears throat> so obviously, I'm in a lot of trouble here with uh, having these Rimrock Knights don't actually block. They kind of don't actually do anything. But this is my fastest way to dig, to look for something to kill them this next turn. Which is basically... Hellkite... Or Bust. Three Hellkite... One extra Bone Crusher Giant. Well, I'm glad they Legion's End the th creatures that can't block. If they would've... If they would've Legion's End the Edgewall Innkeepers, I was dead. So that's good. I was just actually taking lethal if they just did that to the innkeepers. The land fights for us. They just saw that they were three ones, I guess. Puts me down to one. Six, eight, ten, eleven. I have one innkeeper left. So I have one innkeeper left to to help with a redraw. What? What are, what are we doing over here? What are we doing over here? Why, why are they not killing me? I, really, the, the, I guess it was just the Legion's end. They need a Legion's end, the correct thing. Let's see. Well, I mean, I'm really glad we have the Veil of Summers with all the black removal they have. We just have to kind of, kind of draw it. We'll keep it the same. Yeah, ambush. Domri's ambush can be can definitely be nice here. I just kind of want to keep my creature count high. But yeah, this this could be a good matchup for Domri's ambush. <clears throat> we do have to be worried though. You know, if we do play ambush. You have to kind of play it whenever they would be untapped or whenever they they would be tapped out because they have good instant speed removal with Noxious Grasp and uh, the other card, Swift End. Veil doesn't cycle unless your opponent casts a black spell. I can't just cast Veil and draw a card whenever I want. 
So I couldn't just cast a Veil and draw a card there that last turn. It doesn't just always cycle. I really hope they don't kill the innkeeper here. I think it's the best play to just continue with Kurt on curve to play the love struck beast next turn. Boo. Must be nice. Getting your Risen Reef to draw cards. Smash. <laughs> Thanks, Roach. Uh, no, I, ha I haven't played Abzan Hero in a while. I, I don't have any updates on the list. So obviously they're just holding up Murderous Rider to try to kill my Hellkite, and I'm not going to let them do that. close to finishing them off. They attack with their Murderous Rider to gain two life, though. Like, if they have another Murderous Rider for this Hellkite, they can just cancel those out. All right, no removal. We didn't let them murderous rider Hellkite before. And so we got there, three and one. All right, we're gonna play one more with the Gruul Adventure deck. All right. 
We won the Adventure Mirror. Gruel over Golgari. There, in our, our one, in our loss, we got our opponent, you know, like, down to one. I, th I think they were down to one. Maybe down to two. They were down to, you know, like, we were so close to winning it, too. Yeah, so far the decks worked pretty well. It... It doesn't feel like, you know, like the best possible thing to be doing or anything. You know, it doesn't... It's it's not... It doesn't feel absolutely amazing. Cause you, you know, you're just going to have, like, a lot of hands like this and everything. But... There's a lot of power here. I like... I like the, the innkeeper addition to gruel to give because you know gruel really relies on on curving out you know like it just gruel can have like some just pretty nonsense hands and doesn't have much card draw normally and so therefore relies on just curving out but i like the the innkeeper addition that has given us uh given the deck more card advantage and, and ability to play a longer game So we just put three lands down to the bottom, which is not really ideal because we kind of need to draw a couple more lands. But we don't need to draw too many lands. So Demir Guild Gate with Forest. This has to be a Golos deck. Or at least a... Gotta be. We'll take two damage to deal two damage to our opponent. I think that's worth it. Okay, well, hopefully we draw a land and we can go Hellkite, Hellkite, because I think it's kind of likely that my opponent uses a Sweeper. If not, they could certainly be dead. But yeah, hopefully we get this land. Well, that, that should help get a land. That should help. Today's the last day to get the RPG emotes. I have... I got that one. At the Younger. One thing to tell me. I think I like playing Questing Beast over Hellkite. Because if they play a Golos, Questing Beast doesn't get through, but Hellkite still would. So I think I like just playing the Questing Beast right now. 
The good part about playing Hellkite, though, is then if we draw land, then we would have been able to go Beast with Bone Crusher. QQ! Thanks for the cheers. So three people got some RPG emotes now. Oh, that is a nice ghost one. How do you get the RPG emotes? It's just whenever somebody cheers in chat like that, uh, then it unlocks the emotes for other people. So there's three random people in here that just got an emote. No, Grazer. Wait, the opponent's at two? Zalviz. Welcome to the channel, Zalviz. Got us to our sub goal. And now three more people got... Um... An RPG emote. If you're if you're one of the people, it would say on your if you look at your chat, it will say like uh, you know something along the lines of like show what reward you just got. So if, if you're one of the people in chat that just got an emote, click that button. They can maybe say well maybe they'll say like thank thank QQ for your uh, emote. Yeah, iWire has a ton of them. Alright, so we're playing against Golos. We haven't been doing very much for this matchup. We're going to play the Great Henges and cut Pell Collectors. That's what we're doing. Not cutting Rimrock Knight. We're going to cut Pell Collectors for the two Great Henges. Yep, we got the two Ember Cleaves in here. QQ! Yeah. And Drug Wizard's Cheer shared with 10 other people in the chat. Some of y'all definitely have to have these, these RPG emotes. I want to see them. What do you think about the 2-2 two -two haste creature that steals a card for Gruul? I think it doesn't, like, I like the card, but I don't think it really fits in this deck with this deck needing the adventure creatures early on because of Innkeeper. But yeah, you're talking about Robber of the Rich. I do like Robber of the Rich as a card. Hey, nice drug wizard. You got the ghost? Oh, I, I wired just got a ghost. I wired's getting them all. Let's slow this down. I've had. I've Thank you, you, I've had. And QQ as well. Hey, thanks, y'all. Certainly possible that getting the edge wall innkeeper back in play is, is slowing me down a little bit. Hey, oh, there, and the iWire with the, the sub. Thank you, iWire. <laughs> Y'all are making it rain. All right, sub number 11. I need it. We just hit a sub goal a little bit ago. I should update our 12 hour stream. Goals there to reflect that. Uh, 
That's probably good for me, not a sweeper. Yeah, I went with the Ember. So now we can Ember cleave this questing beast. And that should be game. I don't think my opponent can really do anything. No, they can't. <laughs> Getting the birthday cheers. Alright, so that should should be game. Yeah, because this is nine trample. Or no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, it's nine trample. There at eight. This is nine. Thanks, give give me Zan Grief. Thank you so much. <laughs> Warheart got a staff. Nice. like it. Okay, so four and one. A good fast win there. All right, so yeah, our, our Gruul Adventure deck went, um, it went very well. We played against three Golos decks and went three and zero oh in those matches, only losing one game to Golos, where a lot of the games were like what we just saw there. We were just too fast and just ran them over. Um, the Edge Wall, so like with this deck, the Edge Wall Innkeepers were awesome. Rimrock Knight was better than expected, mostly because of Innkeeper. Really, you know, like being able to just be a, a two drop that draws a card, being a three one. Bone Crusher Giant looked awesome. Like Bone Crusher Giant has never been as good. Uh, as it was, like, for me, as it was in this league. But I guess it's just how aggressive we were. Our opponents frequently would try to stabilize at, like, two, and Bone Crusher Giant would finish them off. Um, so, yeah, like, this, I have to say this deck played very well. Um, sideboard, I don't really like Thrashing Brontodons in the sideboard. I think those could be something better. I don't know exactly what. I don't have a, I don't have a great... Um, idea for what to play instead of Thrashing Bronzodons, but I don't like them. I don't think there's, like, the only, like, artifacts or enchantments really are, like, the, the Fires of Inventions, but I think that we're just trying to be faster, and I don't think we really want, like, a four mana card to remove Fires of Invention kind of thing. Um... Yeah, I guess that that's what's there for, but I feel like it could be something better. But but again, not really sure what. Um but yeah, this this deck this play, deck played really really well. Especially Bone Crusher Giant like I said, and then obviously Questing Beast, Hellkite and Ember Cleave are just incredible cards. So, you know, like we have like this really good way like these cards are really powerful at killing the opponents like these three. But with Gruul, you know, you kind of have to like curve into these you know, you basically have to have, like, your really good curve and curve into them every game. Otherwise, you kind of lose because you don't have a very good late game. But this deck got to play a longer game because of because of Innkeeper. You know, Innkeeper would draw some cards and then, you know, have a little bit of removal, have, like, some other big cards. Obviously, Once Upon a Time was just insane. You know, we got to, we got to keep so many sketchy hands because of Once Upon a Time. That card was just amazing, obviously. It, it is. This is a very good Once Upon a Time deck also. So yeah, if you like attacking, you want to play something where, you know, you just do a lot of attacking. This one was good. This is one of the best. This felt like one of the best um, Gruul decks that I've played. So really good here. Yeah. Uh, two mana, destroy, enchantment, artifact, or flyer, the return to nature. That card's a little narrow too. I feel like you just want more threats. Like maybe, like maybe just play. Like maybe these should just be like shifting ceratops. That's what I feel like these should be. Is like shifting ceratops. Where against against like the fires deck, you just want more haste threats. Anyway, like I, I would rather just have, like against against fires invention. I'd rather just play shifting ceratops against them, for example. 
So yeah, that's that's what I'd recommend changing there. Yeah, Shield Breaker could destroy artifacts. It's a very good at destroying artifacts, and it triggers Innkeeper whenever you cast it. That's another option if you want to just destroy artifacts. There's artifacts that you want to destroy. Um, but yeah, anyway, there we go. That's Cruel Adventures. So if you're watching the video later on YouTube, a couple of things. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons over there. And also leave comments. Let me know what you think of the deck. If you're trying it out yourself, how's it going for you? Um, and also, please check out my Patreon page, brand new. I'm putting written content over there and uh, sideboard guides over there. It's $3 a month. If you like the like the videos that I'm making, uh, I did the math. It's about two and a half cents uh, per video. So you know, if you'd like to help support my content with all these videos that I make for YouTube, it's very, very cheap, just $3 a month. Um, I, I put up today a new post why I think that Wizards changing the band announcement from uh, next month to Monday is a pretty big mistake by them. And so check out that post over there. And uh, hope you all like the, the Patreon. I'll continue just to keep on putting up my thoughts and cyborg guides and stuff like that up over there. All right, but that's it here for Gruel Adventures. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.